Hello and welcome to the show that goes beyond the headlines and gives you the big picture. The left movement in India has rich traditions in India even before the country became independent. Throughout the 90s and right up to the first decade of the 2000s, the left presence, although scattered around the country, was undeniable, especially when it came to government formation at the centre. But recent electoral debacles in the erstwhile bastions of Kerala and West Bengal have dealt a body blow to not just the two premier left parties, but also to the idea of a relevant left alternative in India. In a country where the poor get poorer and the rich get richer, and the gap between incomes constantly gets bigger, why hasn't the left sustained the momentum it once had? Why, in a country in which some say is the ideal breeding ground for Marxism, has the left movement been reduced to a fringe political entity? The Communist Party of India, Marxist, just concluded its 20th Party Congress in Kerala and has accepted the ideological resolution presented by Politburo member Sitaram Yachuri. The document tries to suggest ways to deal with the challenges facing the left in the current political scenario. The party has also rejected neoliberal policies while renouncing the extreme right's alleged communal agenda. Tonight on The Big Picture, we debate the relevance of the once popular left movement. We'll also try and find answers to the left's ideological quandary in the backdrop of the changing global scenario. With the last few bastions of communism around the world constantly changing and adapting to retain the relevance and clout, what is the way forward for the left in India? Amatar Khan and joining me in the studio in just a bit will be Kamal Mitra Chinoy from the School of International Studies in JNU. Also joining me in a moment will be his GNU colleague Mridula Mukherjee. And uh, also joining us in just a moment will be TK Arun, editor opinion at the Economic Times. Already joined us on the show is Basudev Acharya, leader of the CPM in the Lok Sabha. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Acharya. If I could come, uh, come to you and ask you a quick question. Why has the left influence in India waned so drastically, uh, given India's socio-economic reality, uh, where the poor and rich, the gap between the poor and the rich is constantly getting bigger? Some would say it was an ideal breeding ground for Marxism in India. Uh, workers, farmers, unions, so-called proletariat is very rich in India. Why has the reverse happened? You see, the, the last assembly election, the election which was held in the 2010-2011, where in West Bengal we have seen that our uh, support has been decelerated almost by 7 percent. Still we got uh, more than 2 crore votes. And in Kerala we have seen that our uh, percentage of vote has not been declined. Uh, only Congress led a uh, coalition got more than two or three seats, they got more, more two, three seats. The difference of percentage of vote is less than one percent. The people's support that we have, we are enjoying today. But there are many factors because we, are, we were in power in West Bengal for more than 34 years. And during the, these 34 years, there had been number of achievements, particularly in rural areas as well as in urban areas. Land reforms has been done in the state of West Bengal in Kerala. And, uh, and, and the, the income of the uh, rural people has been increased. But when we uh, extended our support to the central government in 2004, when we decided to extend our, our support in order to prevent a communal party like BJP to come to power, from coming to power, right. We, 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 we decided to extend support. And now, during this period, you see, we have been both in, inside the parliament and outside the parliament, we have been continuously fighting against the right. anti-people policies right. of Mr. the Acharya, government, new liberal economic Mr. policies Acharya, of the government. Your point is taken. Let me come quickly across to Mridula Mukherjee, yes. who has just joined us. Uh, Mridula, of course, uh, you heard what Mr. Acharya had to say. There were a very strong socialist, uh, leftist movement, even uh, before independence in the, in the country. After independence, Punjab was one of them where the socialist movement grew. Uttar Pradesh, even Bihar for that matter. Where did it all go so wrong for the left and left? And when did that happen? Why can't, couldn't the left sustain the momentum it had garnered during the 60s and the 70s, even to the Naxal Bari movement? What happened? Well, I think the Maoist is a different story, so mm. we won't get into that mm. now. We're really talking about the mainstream the left and particularly parties, yes. the CPM. Uh, I think here very clearly, 
uh, one, the collapse of the Soviet Union and thereby delegitimizing that whole socialist alternative obviously had a very powerful impact on India just as it had everywhere else uh, in the world. Also, I think proper democratic alternatives in terms of popular movements, farmers, peasants, tribals, etc., which were there in the 50s and the 60s and certainly before independence, mm. did not. Uh, the left really did not remain in the leadership of those. These, to the extent that these movements have been there, they've been largely, either it's the Maoists who have been there in the picture, mm. or it's other smaller uh, organizations and some uh, pure Kisan organizations, what we call new social mm. movements mm. or NGOs. Mm. Mm. Uh, the environment movement has had its own uh, leadership. So many new issues which came up, I don't think the left was able to mm. Uh, renew itself quickly enough, think hard enough and assume leadership of those and the older issues which uh, remained also. I think that kind of mass struggles mm -hmm. on which uh, it was based earlier, they really went out uh, of the picture. Right. Mridla, if I, let me ask you this if I can. Uh, how much the left declined politically in India? Would you attribute to uh, what some would say the advent of identity politics in India? Did they fail to grapple the reality that is uh, identity politics in India? Or uh, did they fail to grapple the reality of caste-based equations uh, which play a big part in Indian polity? You know, my understanding in fact is that the rise of identity uh, politics is a consequence of the failure of the left right. to actually give the uh, direction to the people's needs a class direction and a democratic direction. Mm -hmm. In the absence of that happening, people have gone into these directions where either through religion or through caste, you are asserting your identity. Let me, let me get in Basudev Bacharya on this. Basudev, would you agree with Mridula what, what she just said? Uh, has the left in India failed to grapple with the, uh, the reality of uh, identity politics in India? The identity politics is one of the factors you see in some states. Even in West Bengal, we are experiencing the identity politics that Darjeeling which was once a stronghold of uh, uh, communist uh, in, in, in way back in 1946, uh, Ratanlan Brahman was elected from, uh, elected from Darjeeling. But this is one of the factors. But it is not the fact that the class movement, the struggle that are not taking place in our country. You have seen four years back in Rajasthan that there was a, there was a big struggle in demand of water, the land, and in, in, in Andhra Pradesh, there had been a big struggle by the people, poor, poor people, landless people, uh, demanding uh, land, uh, 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 land struggle was there. In Bihar, we have seen number of our comrades were martyred in Samastipur, in Bebutipur, in, in Darbhanga, in these areas, there was a struggle. And, and, and you have seen also uh, only our trade union would be able to unite entire working class to launch a bigger struggle and have an all India strike, historic strike on 28th of February. That was because of left-led trade union. So struggle was there, but you see during last uh, one and a half decades, this caste-based politics that has polarized the people even poorer are divided. Right. This caste and communal based uh, uh, politics. Right. Because we have seen in the, in, the, in, in the past, from Uttar Pradesh, at least six to seven members of parliament used to be elected from Uttar Pradesh. Right. From Bihar, seven, eight members of parliament used to be elected. Mr. Acharya, but let that me... That has divided the people among divided the... Let me, let me interrupt you for a minute, sir, and get uh, Kamal Mitra Chinoy, of course, uh, from, the, uh, from the SIS in JNU. Uh, get in, uh, let me get in, uh, him into the discussion. Now, there are right-wing authors, especially notably Robert Harvey. Now, he points out that Marxists have succeeded only uh, where uh, in industrial underdeveloped uh, developed, uh, regions with the boom in the Indian economy uh, and the consequent rapid rise in living standards, the support based on the communist... Uh, communists in India has declined. Now, would you say that's a fair assessment or is it a too simplistic uh, a way to look at it? Because in my opinion, at least, uh, not just the economic uh, reality of India, but also socio-economic causes are, uh, have as much to do with the decline of, uh, of support uh, for the left parties as is anything else. 
I think that is true, uh, but it is also true that the decline hasn't been that rapid or that massive. For example, the CPI has six uh, lakh 44,000 members. The CPIM has about one million. So it's not that the left is withering away, but they have not worked out a way to deal with, the, uh, with uh, communal configurations, with caste configurations, and how to bring people in to their masses without uh, contaminating uh, the others with these ways of thinking. Right, right. A fair point. We'll take a short breather right now uh, and come back and discuss uh, more about this topic. Of course, TK Arun, uh, editor, opinion of the Economic Times will join us after the break. Don't go anywhere. Lots of discussion left. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture and we're still discussing the relevance of the left movement in India. TK Arun, welcome to the show again one more time. Uh, let me come straight to it. A lot of commentators have said that they've labelled the ideology of the left as good as dead. But they also agree that the idea uh, is still alive and kicking. The idea of Marxism per se is still alive and kicking. It is a reality after all, wouldn't you agree, that most political parties in India have taken a page out of the left handbook and in pursuing those aggressive arm army policies, proletariat policies. Uh, would you say that's a fair assessment, that the left have actually failed to make political capital of a, out of a very sound idea in India? The situation is actually a little complex. Uh, Enlighten us. Uh, yeah. I would think that the left is still very much relevant given the state of the polity and of the economy. But the way the left views uh, its programmatic uh, project in the country, I think is completely flawed. Even in the present uh, party congress, the stand on ideological issues that it has taken pits it against the current of history. It continues to mouth the old shibboleth of capitalism having become moribund or being irrelevant and obsolete mm. and an unviable form of organizing production. Mm. This makes it incapable of coming up with any constructive agenda in this country. Take a concrete example of the POSCO project. Yes, the people have a right to protest appropriation of their land without just compensation, without just intrusion of their livelihoods uh, into the project's overall ambit. But should the left be merely opposing the project or should the left be demanding that the project be implemented in the right way, incorporating the people's interests uh, so that you have more industry, more investment, more jobs, uh, change in the economic structure. The fact that this is a capitalist project makes the programmatic understanding of the left incapable of saying we need a constructive way of implementing this project. Right. The same was visible in Singhu, the same was visible in industrialization of West Bengal overall. So it is this basic failure to understand the current viability of capitalism, mm -hmm. continuing viability of capitalism, which makes the left marginal to the whole scheme of things. Right. Let me put that question to Basudev Acharya, who's, who's with us uh, as well. Mr. Acharya, TK Arun says that uh, the left has become too rigid uh, in its outlook on capitalism. Would you agree with that? We are not rigid, we are not dogmatic. Marxism is not a dogma, it is a scientific. And, and we analyze the concrete situation in a concrete manner. And we have analyzed in our ideological resolution that we have adopted in, in our 20th Party Congress, we have explained that the situation has been changed. The, 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 there is a crisis in the capitalism that also we have stated. And the, the socialism, uh, what will be the socialism in 21st century, it will be quite different from the 20th century socialism. So you have seen the change in our approach, in our uh, outlook, and, and, and we have, uh, it depends on the concrete situation, and we are analyzing that concrete situation and we are taking decision. So left has a space in the politics of our country, nobody can deny, because only left who are raising the issues of our uh, majority section of the people who are 
downtrodden, who are the poor, the lower middle class, no other political parties. You can go through the proceedings of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, you can find only left parties are raising the issues of the people uh, concerning the problems of the people. Right, right, sir. So right, sir. Let me get in there. Let me get in there, sir. But that is not reflected. You see that that is not reflected in the election because today, today elections are 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 vitiated with money power and muscle power. You have seen in Rajya Sabha election in Jharkhand. Right, in right, Jharkhand, sir. If to get elected, if 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 few crores rupees are spent. It is very difficult for the poor people to get elected in Lok Sabha. Right, right, sir. Let me let me get in Mridla Mukherjee very quickly. Uh, Mridla, some would say uh, ideologically over the years, the left, uh, the left's uh, position has been ostrich-like. Uh, of course, Basudev Acharya doesn't agree, and he he can of course give political examples. But uh, on an intellectual and ideological basis, do you think their uh, their uh, position on, on key issues, on how they view capitalism and the ever-changing global scenario, uh, is that too rigid? Has they, have they been ostrich-like, as some would call it? You know, I certainly think that uh, after uh, the collapse of uh, the Soviet Union and, uh, you know, and of socialism in Eastern Europe, one hoped and expected that the Indian left given its history, glorious history, given that it has an enormous uh, intellectual uh, uh, capacity, some of the best intellectuals in the country belong to that stream. One would have, it should have given leadership to the world in rethinking how to place, how to visualize socialism in the 21st century and beyond. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't happened, unfortunately, mm -hmm. except from some stray uh, voices outside the party system that attempt one doesn't see. Mm -hmm. A real fresh, uh, thinking where uh, you look critically hmm. at that past and I think also one expected because the Indian left has its own experience of actually having worked at the popular level among peasants, among workers, hmm. among middle classes hmm. and having worked in the freedom struggle. Uh, they had the capacity to do that. One sees glimmerings of it like reports that have come in uh, of what happened in uh, Kerala a lot more obviously debate, discussion, and maybe even factional uh, quarrels are going on over there. And a lot of it is being obviously deliberately leaked to the press. So mm -hmm. one's getting a lot more in the newspaper about the, what's the criticism that the Bengal group has made, right, right. et cetera, and what are the differences, et cetera. And clearly there is a strong wing within, mm. which may, it has not articulated it theoretically, but you can deduce from it, mm. the Choti Basu line, where right. he called it a historic blunder that he should not, not have been allowed yeah. to do. And then uh, taking, uh, withdrawing support to the UPA, that has been a strain mm. that the Bengal uh, wing of the party. Have now that has theoretical implications, some, but I'm saying much beyond. I think as TK Arun said, they needed and we expected that the Indian left would be able to hmm. uh, think critically, begin to think critically, at least be able to say this is not the answer hmm. and that we've got to look for new answers. Right. But that is where, so there are glimmerings, uh, I think in this ideological resolution one sees some uh, glimmerings, you right. know, of uh, going beyond wanting to break, but then somewhere you again find that it remains confined right. within that. Right. Uh, Coming to an earlier question, uh, Professor Chinoy, uh, we were talking, just before you uh, came on the show, we were talking about how uh, uh, the left probably has missed the chance in a country where farmers, unions, workers, the constituency was there, but Marxism somehow failed to connect at a large and a mass level over the years. Uh, Kanshiram used to say that uh, the, we are doing the communist work, we are uh, uh, engaging with the Dalits, the real proletariat. Do you think the communists sort of missed out on that huge constituency uh, that exists in India? Uh, especially the Dalits and the backward castes? Well, you know, in terms of ideology, uh, I, I don't think that they have made major mistakes. Though, of course, the way the ideology is sometimes framed is not uh, reader-friendly. But I think the problem is that India is a vast country. And in elections, you need money. And that is something left has in short supply about alternatives uh, that TK has raised. Well, for example, POSCO uh, is on extremely rich beetle leaf plants. And they're, in addition, demanding another pot. So a lot of land would go. 
So this is obviously something uh, that the left must fight over mm. and they are fighting on it. Mm. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say is that uh, going back to Comrade Acharya, uh, capitalism is moribund, but it's a somewhat different capitalism. There is a finance capital, but it isn't the finance capital of old. It's a new finance capital. Mm. In other words, capitalism has changed. It is in crisis. That is clear from the EU to the states. But to fight it, one has to realize that one is fighting a different kind of animal, mm. which is now utterly ruthless, willing to take away all the social security benefits from workers, and has to watch out that if India has some sort of crisis, that uh, it is not allowed to get away with that. Right, right. On that note, we'll take another break. We'll come back to you, Mridula and TK as well. We'll go to Acharya, uh, Dr. Acharya as well. Uh, take a short break right now. Come back. We'll discuss all things left. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching the big picture. We're still discussing uh, the relevance of the left movement in India. Tiki Arun, uh, the, the new ideological document also says the left must find uh, an India-specific uh, space, that unique brand of socialism, socialism that suits the idea of India and that vision of a democratic left that India, that uh, the, the left in India wants to come doesn't have to be uh, uh, on the China model or, or other socialist models around the country. Uh, is that just obstinate rhetoric in the face of, of electoral uh, debacles? Or do you think the left has something to go on there in realistic terms? It is not just uh, because of the electoral debacle. I think it is fundamental confusion to call what prevailed under Stalin and Russia as socialism. I think the travesty of the idea of socialism. To call the extremely exploitative uh, system in China a socialism, where workers who have the minimum rights that workers in India have, or workers in Kerala or Bengal have, I think is a travesty of the idea of socialism. To call primitive economies, uh, backward economies, uh, you know, at one point Yemen was called a socialist republic. Mm -hmm. uh, now Vietnam is trying to build capitalism and now to call it socialist. Just because there is a communist party, authoritarian party in office, does an economy or a society become socialist? Mm -hmm. I think that itself is a basic uh, travesty of the idea of socialism. Mm -hmm. So this is not related to purely uh, electoral debacles. See, the left has had a glorious electoral run in India. In Kerala, whether the left formally forms a government or not, the left is in power. The social agenda the left put forward in Kerala in the 50s and the 60s was uh, bought into by all sections of society. So the Kondas in Kerala, the Muslim in Kerala, everybody in Kerala is virtually uh, some other version of the left. Hmm. Hmm. But the tragedy of the left is that while they were effective and successful in leading social change from uh, pre-capitalist uh, kind of uh, situations mm. to a capitalist one, mm. they have no constructive vision to take it forward further. Right, right, right. Fair this, point. This let, me, let me go go to Mr. Acharya with that. Basudev uh, uh, Acharya, TK Arun said, of course, there is some sort of confusion, uh, a heavy degree of confusion uh, where the left is at right now, ideologically and otherwise as well. Uh, would you agree with that? Very briefly, sir, if you could, where does the left go from here uh, in India now? Very briefly, if you could, sir. See, we are not confused at all. We discussed... You see, in 1992, in our Chennai Party Congress, after the vehicle of Soviet Union, when Soviet Union was dis dismantled, and we, we uh, how, how, why, why that happened, we discussed. Even prior to that, we criticized the revisionist policies of uh, Soviet Communist Party, and as well as we criticized also Chinese Communist Party. And our model, Will not, neither will be Russian model or uh, Chinese model. It will be Indian model. We have, at length, we have discussed. And in a, uh, only in Communist Party you can find out inner democracy, where every party member has right to suggest, uh, give their amendment, and participate in the discussion. Right. Debate, we allow debate on. And after, after debate, we come to a conclusion and whatever decision has been taken in, 
in in Kalikhet. That was unanimous right, decision. Right, right, sir. Point taken, sir. Point taken. Party. I'll have to cut you short and there, we, sir. We point taken, sir. Uh, we, let me come to Kamal Mr. Chunai. Very briefly, sir. We have very little time left. Uh, the left has uh, has been routed in Bengal. Uh, Kerala, they obviously suffered a defeat. They have pocket pocket boroughs of support in Tamil Nadu and Andhra and some other states in the country. Where does the left go from here? Is it a spent force in India? It's not a spent force, and I think a major question is about allowing multiple ideas of what the alternative reality could be inside the party. Uh, the, the parties have to open up more and bring intellectuals to them, as they did in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, whatever the party Congress adopts, history will move as it moves. Right, right. Uh, last word on the show to Atumridullah Mukherjee, briefly if you could. Right. Is, is, is the left on the wrong side of history right now? Do they have to make monumental changes in the way they think, otherwise perish? If they want to grow, if they want to become hegemonic, yes, they can survive. They can go up a little, down a little. But if they want to become a hegemonic force in this country, they certainly have to. And I'd like to support uh, and make more explicit uh, what uh, Kamal said. Uh, and that's the one point which I think got left out in the earlier discussion. The whole question of the principle on which the Communist parties uh, were built and which still survives right. in the CPM, democratic centralism, which is not democracy at all. I'm sorry to disagree with uh, Comrade Acharya over there, that everybody can discuss and give their opinion, but people are not elected. There's no, it, the Politburo is nominated. It's uh, mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. clear. And uh, inner party democracy, I mean, I think that's an overstatement. Right, right. At the cost you of... Know, so I think, no, and I want to say that unless, one would expect, in fact, the left to give the lead in establishing a truly, in uh, true inner party uh, democracy. Right. You know, and also to theorize their experience of parliamentary democracy in India, which they're not doing. Right. You know, there's, there's too much still of a gap between even their own practice and the theory. And what they say on paper, yeah. right. At the cost of running into trouble with my producer, take your own last words on the left. We have no time left. Uh, where does the left go from does here? Does the now? left have time left? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very pertinent question, isn't it? <laughs> no, the left, see, if you look at all political parties, the left is still one political formation where people come in, join, with an eye not to make an extra buck, yeah. but still to do something good for society. So that is still something very much in favor of the left. Right. But unless you decide to use, it, uh, channelize those energies or these people who come in mm -hmm. to something constructive, mm -hmm you cannot really do anything. Right, right. Now, that constructive agenda is what the left has to shape. And, and it's still missing right now. That's, right. that's where we end the show right now. Thank you, Basudeva Acharya, for joining us. TK Arun, uh, Kamal Mitra Chinoy, as well as Mridula Mukherjee. Of course, uh, the left must make monumental changes, not just in theory, but also in the implementation of their agenda if they want to survive in the country. By no means has the left perished. Of course, they have still a long way to go. I think that, of course, I think we agree on. It hasn't, uh, it is not a spent force yet. Spent force yet, I beg your pardon. That's all we have tonight uh, from the the big picture. Till the next time when we get you another edition uh, of the same program. Thank you. Good night and goodbye. Thanks for watching.